Would you ever in your entire life guess that Tracy Morgan what? owns the Bronx Zoo? Tracy Morgan Tracy owns Morgan. the Bronx Zoo, dude. Google it. <laughs> She's like, I don't know what's going on in your life unless you tell me, Damn. and that's the way I want it. Damn, Jasmine, too. Not since Mike joined, have I not? Yes. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> but feeding the baby and keeping, that's not, I mean, diapers and, and have become very affordable. Yes. Diapers and baby food. And yeah. you got all that food in your titty, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you porn Italian, welcome to Critsy Chaos. We're talking about a Italian uh, high diver's butt. Um, we can't find it, by the way. We have everyone here today. We have Michael Shane Cannon. Hello, v brother. Vito Babymouth Khaleesi and John the Father Grady. We have a sexologist potentially coming in uh, later. Um, so it might be this episode, might be next week's episode. I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I'm riddled with anxiety because I have to go to Dubai. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling <laughs> about that? Nicole put a uh, an over under on whether or not it happens. Yes. Wife I, Nicole. She's like, I hope he goes. I want him to go. I'm not sure he's going. I will tell you, it's nothing to do with the good people of Dubai. <laughs> um, I like Dubai. I've never been there. It seems fine. I don't. I just I do not want to get on a plane and be on the other side of the world. I don't have any interest in going. I don't. Not that I don't like the desert. I'm really genuinely only going because it's Jasmine's birthday. Sure. So, like, if the, if ja if it was not Jasmine's birthday, I would have just said no to going. Does any part of you look at things like this as something you'll be able to talk? Like, you're not even really going to enjoy the experience, but you are going to enjoy the bragging rights that come with being yes. able to say, I was in the Middle East at what one I point. Think, what I think I've realized as a person <laughs> is I like the idea and the thoughts and the anticipation of traveling and going somewhere yeah. more than I like actually being there. The only place that I go that I actually, that's, you know, far away place that I actually enjoy going to outside of you know united states places is london <laughs> yeah, when i go to yeah. london uh, because i think it's just the way new york like the people who built new york had come from london pretty much and they sure. were like oh we're just going to make the city that we know here so i like it feels familiar yes i don't like that's why you love chicago too yeah i love it's, chicago yeah. i love boston i love you know dublin and, and sure. belfast i love i love i, I like europe yeah, yeah. I don't want, I have no desire to go anywhere else. I don't know why. I just I mean, don't I mean, care. <laughs> it's funny how you're like, I like Europe. I feel comfortable <laughs> in Europe. with my own people in Europe. It's anything outside of that where I, I start think to that get nervous. A, I think that there is a part of me too that no matter what you tell me mm -hmm. about Dubai being sure. like, you know, like America and whatever, being in the Middle East just makes me uncomfortable. You've also gray areaed yourself enough as a potential homosexual for this to be a problem. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know? And also I think that I've You made... should bring a squirrel suit for any, you know, <laughs> yeah. any nighttime roof visits. <laughs> I think I've also, I think I've also, um, you know, outwardly at different times in my career just made fun of Islam, sure. you know? And I, I think there's a part of me even though, like, you know, you have this spotlight bias where I'm like, I know that nobody gives a shit about me. I know, but I do think, like, is there somebody who's going to randomly right. see something and be like, that motherfucker's in our country. Let's get him. Here's the thing, though, dude, is if you, if you become a POW, a prisoner of conflict, prisoner of war, there is no doubt that we would, I mean, we would probably trade a war criminal for you right if we're giving up somebody like the the merchant of death for britney griner yeah we would give up i yes somebody for successful white male comedian krista Stefano. i think yeah i yes <laughs> <laughs> who were the 9 give? 11 story darling krista <laughs> yeah, Stefano. Yes. we got to get this patriot back overseas come on <laughs> i know it'd be funny i wonder like who they would give up for me <laughs> I, I wonder like who they'd be like dude just give us chris and we'll give you who can they give just somebody? what do you think they'd frame you with though because like britney griner whether she brought the weed cartridges or not like it's up for debate i guess but it's consistent with her she said she's like openly been a marijuana user right so for you say you don't bring anything dirty you're perfectly within the laws as you're going over there but they want to get chrissy d with a believable crime what are they slipping in your bag that is believable well no i don't know that they could slip i think what they would get me on i it's actually illegal i think in dubai mm -hmm. to 
uh, share a hotel room with someone who isn't your wife. Oh. And I put on the forms that Jasmine was my wife, but we were legally not married. So I, I think like that's something that they is actual like a prosecutable crime right. in Dubai. You cannot like dwell with a woman who isn't your wife. You can tell them though that like Nimesh put his hand on both your shoulders and <laughs> yeah. said it was legit. I mean, what is your guys' opinion of Dubai? Would you go? Do you th does it feel like the media says it's safe? It's not like going to Iraq. I've been there, by the way. You've been into well, Dubai? I, I've oh, been, no. I, I, just, I just, it was a layover in Dubai. But then I went to, like, the, the Middle East. Like, I was in Jordan, Kuwait, and Bahrain. Yeah, no, that I knew, but you were with the U.S. Army, so it's different. Sure, but, I mean, not the whole time. Dude, r like, often in in transport to these places we were like just in a hasidic minivan with like a guy that said he was a troop but he's wearing john's shorts <laughs> really like, in, like a straight up ups outfit there's no guns anywhere yeah. we're just driving through desert as far as the eye can see the scariest thing i saw my entire trip over there was we're in 360 degree sand and i just looked out and just 400 yards into the middle of the desert were four men talking. <laughs> really? just nothing around, <laughs> no cars, no nothing, just four dudes meeting up in the desert. Yeah. It was terrifying. But you felt safe, though, to be honest. Yeah, I, I'm able to compartmentalize fear in that way where it's like if you know if i die i just hope the bomb's right next to me god i don't want to be lieutenant dan i want to be absolutely eviscerated well they said they you know somebody said like you know if you look at historically a lot of those terrorists that, that doesn't happen in the middle east because right. like it's that it happens outside of totally it. but i worry like am i going to be the guy that like isis storms in and they just behead me <laughs> you know, but yeah. is Dubai or is Dubai just really a lot safer? I don't think you have literally anything to worry about. What do whatsoever. you think, John Vito? Is Mike right or wrong? Do, would you go to Dubai? I would. Uh, my question is, is there no alcohol there? And can you not smoke weed? Is that you can't? That no, no, you like, cannot. I don't think people. You, I don't think are. you can. I do right? think you can drink, though. I, th yeah. I think that they have some sort of like loophole to the law where you can consume alcohol because it's technically like the party spot of the Middle East. So I, I don't know if it's like you got to pay for it or if it's some sort of, you know, elite tourism package. But you, I think you could do that. Yeah. Weed, for sure, you will get aladdin in the middle of an outdoor shop. <laughs> and ev I, even though you don't have to, I am requiring Jasmine to cover her head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told you, Nicole was almost, you know, the subject of an international conflict. Because in Doha, Qatar, <laughs> when I went to get our business seats for the way back, she the guy was like, nice to meet you, Mr. Cannon, shook my hand and then said, hello. Mrs. Cannon, and she like grabbed his hand and shook it <laughs> raw dog. And I was like, He was like, Now I must kill myself <laughs> and my family. <laughs> yeah, I thought my wife was gonna get declitted four days into our marriage. <laughs> oh, she went to Qatar with you. Yeah. I thought this was the one where she told you she was pregnant with crew, and then you went to the Middle East. So that was uh, that was another one. I, I, I did wow, I've been to the Middle East twice actually. I uh, that was I conceived, we conceived our son. The night you before conceived, I conceived, but I, I've told this story before, but I was joking and like stealing valor the entire week before saying I'm deploying. And then literally the night before as a goof, I tapped her ass, said I was deploying and just poofed right inside of her. <laughs> and then I came home two weeks later and she told me she was pregnant. So I am a, I am a true soldier. Yes. But then this one Doha in Qatar, that was for our, uh, that was for our honeymoon. So we flew, we had to we had to stop in Qatar to get to Bali because oh, it was right. 24 hours, but it was like 13 and a half to Doha. So what did you do? Uh, by the way, I've never been on a flight. This, that's what it is from New York to Dubai. It's 13 hours. Yeah. What, it, does it just start to settle in? Like, do you just be like, this just sucks and you deal with it? How did you deal with 13 hours? I, I, I find comfort in knowing that I can't go anywhere. To be honest, like there, there's something about that where I have this brain that is constantly thinking everyone is achieving my dreams when mm -hmm. I'm still right. <laughs> like the moment yeah. I sit still, everybody is doing everything I've ever wanted with my life. Right. So I get worried about that. But if I'm confined, similar with like quarantine, right, when everybody was quarantined and everybody was locked into their home, I was like, this is actually dope because nobody's doing anything. And right. This is the ultimate excuse to right. just stand still. And that's how I felt for the flight where it's like. Give yourself the green light. You never get to sit still. You never have a 13-hour stretch where you can truly sit on your ass as a father and do nothing but enjoy movies and alcohol right in front of your face <laughs> with your wife. 
just enjoy it, dude. Enjoy that. Like you are more or less unzipping the fabric to this dimension, stepping into a small vacation. <sighs> and then you can walk right back into the Middle East and perform for, you know, the Sultan. That's a good point. Did you try to bring weed and edibles into Qatar? No. If I can't go two weeks without smoking <sighs> weed or doing edibles, then there is a real big problem happening. <laughs> yeah. You know, I need to address some some serious shit. Do you? <laughs> when is the last time you didn't take edibles? That trip. So every day since then, you've taken edibles. Oh, oh, no, I think there's been days here and there, and I even take days off right. here and there. And leading up to my edible, uh, or leading up to my special, I got down to 100 milligrams a day, which for me is, is like pretty good. But I, you know, because I was up into, now I'm like back up because after yeah. the, after yeah, the special, I've been celebrating. So like yesterday, I took 450 throughout the whole day. The day before, I took like 600. Like it's like, it's... And I'm having fun. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not losing my mind. It's actually, like, it's just a better massage. 420, by the way, go see Mike's show in Stamford, yeah. Connecticut. Right? <laughs> yeah, we're going back to Stamford, yeah. baby. Yes. I'm making a career out of Stamford, Connecticut. Dude, I'm going to be the Bob Marley of that one city. I have to be honest with you. I like Stamford, Connecticut. I love it's it. a really cool city. And uh, Mike just filmed uh, his one-hour special. He annihilated. It was uh, really, really, really great. Thank um, you, and man. it was really awesome to um, to uh, see our manager, the Italian woman, come over to me and be like, yo, who are Nicole's friends? <laughs> <laughs> Just constantly being asked about who Mike's wife's friends were. Yeah, yeah. Um, she does have very pretty friends. I would and, introduce. Uh, I would allow one of them to destroy his life. Yes. And I know exactly which one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the one who almost destroyed mine. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, it like that. That's one of those things, though, dude. Where you know, and and we'll 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 get off this after. I don't want to celebrate me too hard. But I I'm just do saying that. Like, it was just such a fantastic weekend from all from all aspects. There's so much anxiety leading up to it, as you know, and just you know, the pressure that we put upon ourselves. It's two years in the making. It's all of this material. For sure, you get two shots at it, but like. If the first one doesn't go well, then you get one shot at it, and right. then your whole brain kind of folds in in itself. So I'm I'm just dealing in those waters the entire time, and for the for the night to go, how it went with Nicole directing crazy, the the whole squad behind it being incredible. You Nicole being Lyons, to, not Nicole, Nicole his C. wife. Lyons, not wife. Yeah, like Chris producing and coming out and like you know almost giving me away like a father with his daughter. Yes, to his audience yes. just being like, I I believe in this guy. I love yes. this guy. One of my best friends in comedy. He really qualified that several times. Yes, and, I but, gave I gave my bride away to his beautiful black audience. <laughs> <laughs> but it really like you know I, I do want to be sincere. It, it meant a lot. Like it, the the opportunity and everything that you did for me. It's like. It means a lot, and it's it's rare, and it should be acknowledged whenever somebody has a friend like this. And you're a fucking great dude and a great friend, and I genuinely appreciate you, buddy. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. God, I better not get killed in the <laughs> Middle East. What do you? Actually, that might be the way to sell the special. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Chris <laughs> Stefano's final curtain call. Girl, okay. Oh, and, there it is. Oh wow. I mean, what do you think of that, Cecilia Bragandini? I mean, that's Photoshop. You're telling me, Vito? Uh, I, but that's not. That's not that one is. I prefer the knot. I prefer the knot as well. Let's just be honest. I mean, Italian people in general are probably the most beautiful people, right? The it's men between and the women. them and Puerto Rican, which is wild that that's who you've chosen to mate with. Right. You guys right. are going to, you're going to create like super attractive. You yes. have created super well, attractive people. Because like I did a thing yesterday with uh, Matteo Lane, the great Matteo Lane. We're going to be putting out some content where, like, he's teaching me all these things because he's, you know, beyond talented. He's a, he's a gay Swiss army knife. He Yes. He, <laughs> yes. He should. That should be his Instagram handle. <laughs> gay Swiss army knife. He can do, like, he's so insanely talented. And it was one of those things where we were, like, changing, uh, you know, because we did a couple of episodes. He was changing his shirt. And I was looking at him. And I think we've spoken about this before. I was like... I don't think it's gay if I if I want to be with him. Yeah. I wouldn't say that it's gay. It's just I'm I'm with a beautiful living human being. Right. It it transcends sexuality. Yes. It also, and I don't know if you feel this, but I get 
the impulse to less like to less make love to that person and more like I want to wear him. Yes. Like I want to take his body for a spin <laughs> just to know what it feels like to be that wanted. Yes. Now here we go. This is a beautiful dumper. She's a beautiful girl. I like yeah, I is. like her. And then yeah, her ass is yeah, I mean, it's um it's pretty incredible. Yeah. Did you see the guy Do you think she has a hairy butt? Um, I think Italians typically do have hairy vaginas. She can't because she's a swimmer. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, so, yeah. But I guess divers. I don't know. They're still. They still need the. You just never know. Like those suits look like they are like painfully put on. If I was an Italian woman, just for fun, I would name my pussy Vito. <laughs> 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 if you were high, that would have been Vegito. Vegito. <laughs> um, did you see Google Google um, diver falling off diving board in front of in front of like I think it was the Queen of some, just diver falling off diving board. This guy like in front of everyone, this fucking idiot. It's just an accident. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> It was like the opening ceremony. Oh. Yeah, diver diver slips during the Olympic pool inauguration. Oh, <laughs> oh ah, I mean, you know, <laughs> that looked like a toddler getting double jumped on a trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick! Oh. He, but how do you not feel stupid <laughs> after that? <laughs> Right there, that moment, he's just like, well, our life's work is over. Oh, Bro, he my. did the full Joe Pesci home alone, like the, <laughs> yes! the feet above the head. Yes. It's one thing if like you make a little mistake and you splash too much, but it's like, this guy <laughs> fell like a cartoon this is, guy. This is the best stoppage, though, of those two men just gracefully in the air and him <laughs> breaking his back on the side of the Yeah, put it back. Look, look, get it to that point where, yeah, oh. look at that. Just... Be <laughs> <laughs> Could you practice that a million times? It's just un I'm sure there was like the diving board was wet. It was like a yep. I'm sure this guy's I mean this guy's an Olympic diver, a so he's got a big storm. Of look at this. Look at this guy. <laughs> what do you oh. think you would be like the other two guys are hysterical laughing? I mean, yeah. The thing that you have to do if after this is like you almost have to make your own t-shirt of you. <laughs> Yeah. Falling, right, what? like you can't, you can't not show your face. You can't like try to take it seriously. <laughs> you have to just full blown go into it. I'm the guy that shattered his back. Yeah. In front is, of the there, is there footage of him getting out of the pool? <laughs> I want to see what happened after. What happens at the end? <laughs> him slinking <laughs> out of the pool. <laughs> it was probably the funniest thing to ever see. Just rolling out. Oh my oh. god, dude. Yeah, it's it's if you don't lean into that <laughs> yeah let's see um i don't show it dude God. my dad this my, my dad one time at our town pool oh the, it was france it was the and it was in front of the president of france <laughs> my dad one time did this in our town pool small like backyard private pool right he goes under and he's under for a while and he's like kind of writhing under the water and people are like what's going on like everybody starts like checking it out and finally it's like 20 seconds or something like that and the, the, the lifeguard's like I don't think he's coming up and she's like 16 dives into the water grabs him is like fighting like hell to get her get him above water he finally just goes oh no I just have a cramp <laughs> <laughs> and then had to literally like manatee himself out of water like uh. pull his fucking fat tits to stomach to top of thighs up onto the side and then roll slowly <laughs> <laughs> while the whole pool was just yeah, watching, watching him. him. Oh. But he would have died probably, right? He couldn't get up. You know, it would have been worth to, worth it to find out. Yeah. <laughs> Look at his bod. It's great. I would love to be ripped like Did that. Did you ever try to do a swimmer's workout? No. In college at Geneseo after basketball, I thought that like my life was going to... I like looked at Michael Phelps in the pool and I was like, that's, that's what, what I, I need want. To be. I want that giant wingspan. you see his back? No, Look at his back. It? Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, dude. Yeah. That's br that's from the lashings right. from the president after. <laughs> right <laughs> above the Olymp below the Olympic <laughs> rings. This is so fucking. So the thing is, this is also kind of like, of course, it's an all time embarrassing moment, but it also sets him apart from everybody else. Yeah. Like nobody would know this guy was even a part of that team 
choreography had that not happened. But now he gets to make fun of himself. He probably has a little like late night career in Italy. Like it comes on, sure. like, you know, Bart Simpson. Oh, if, if this was the States, he'd probably be doing some suburban uh, headliner shows. He would totally. be on this. Yeah, I'd open for him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, what were we saying? We were, say we're saying something. I know. But I know. <laughs> I can't think, though. Why can't I think? I haven't been sleeping. You know, since Monday, you ever just have this? Since Monday, I don't know why, I've just been, I've gotten, like, every morning I've woken up, I've been exhausted. Yeah. What do you think's going on? And I'm not eating, nothing's changed without my habits. Could that it Could it be the eclipse? Could it be the eclipse? It could be a mental state. It could be anxiety about your upcoming trip. Right, right. Um, that's, that's probably what it is then, I think. Yeah. Well, do you know, so I've been complaining for weeks, if not months, about this sciatica and back pain yeah. and all this shit. And I've been doing so much to stretch it out and change my workout and all this stuff. And Sunday morning, I woke up and I'm like, it is 80% gone. Yep. I was like, so that was almost entirely in my own head. <laughs> anxiety. Psychosomatic. Yep. I'm such a piece of shit. It was very real pain. Like, I couldn't move. It was like, it was, I mean, it also could be the fact that like i'm having sympathy pains with my who knows if that yeah. she's just also pouring estrogen into me through homeostasis so i am just crying at the drop of a hat it's are you getting nervous house. now about do you have you thought about like yet i'm gonna have to go through like diapers and sleepless yeah. nights like all over again does that excite you does that make you nervous does it make you happy sad it makes me nervous, but only because it's it's not here yet. Like, I feel like what it's the same thing as like a special or the same thing as like going on stage. The worst part is the introduction. Right. Like I, I equated the my last baby. It's like waiting that nine months for your first child to come is like you're on the side at stage being introduced to go headline MSG for nine months straight. Yes. <laughs> like you're the, the intro lasts for that long and you're just like ready to go up on stage you're like god damn it please just let me go up there let me get out there tell a fucking joke i know i can do it but it's all anticipation but then once you're in it i feel like it's so hard so exhausting and so all-encompassing that you don't really even have time to feel any of that stuff yeah yeah i i i think too because uh, now my violet She's three. Yeah. She's oh, about to be three. Yeah. So like she's so crazy. She's dude. She's kind of like you know. She's like wearing like you know out of diapers. She <clears> wears like little like training underwear now. Yeah. Like she can tell us when she's going to the bathroom. Like we don't even use the stroller that much anymore. And like this, there was this whole time I remember when Jasmine was pregnant with Violet. I was like, man, we just got out of diapers and strollers with Delilah. I'm gonna have to go through this. It's gonna be so long. But yeah. like you start, your brain starts to do that. And then, like, you're just in it, and you go through it, and you're like, yeah, times are hard at times. You know, sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's not, whatever. But then, like, you just go through it. And now I, I just kind of realized the other day, I was like, oh, we're through that really hard part. We're yeah. almost through. Yeah. Now, I will say this. When I went through that with Delilah, when we had Delilah, I wanted another child. I really did. Oh, I was wow. like, I want a sibling. I want her to have a sibling, you know, in addition to my stepson. I was like, I want, I want to have two biological yeah. children, right? But... Now, going through Violet, you know, like with Violet, I'm like, I don't want any more kids. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, yeah. you know, if it happened, we would bless it. But I was like, it's a different feeling now. Like, something, I feel completely feel, yeah, satisfied. Yeah. Do you feel that way, you think, with this? I, I mean, I am, Nicole's like, in my dream world, I would have a third. And I'm like, what? What fucking planet are you living on? First yeah. of all, we are very, like, the lucky and uh you know the fact that we're 39 38 she's 38 i'm 39 and we're having Ew. a second shot yeah it's, i mean she's got tim burton cobwebs in that clam <laughs> yeah. so the fact that she's not giving birth to a bat is yeah. fucking a victory yeah. in and of itself <laughs> but you know that like it it i feel like what i was reluctant in the sense that i'm worried about the work and and all right. that stuff because of my own personal limitations i yeah. get worried that i'm not going to show up even though i do each and every time like i just get i i get worried about myself not about what's going to happen because one i'm a narcissist i guess but two i also have like complete confidence in nicole in my son and then in us as a family and our like the way we vibe yeah. and communicate and shit so yeah yeah it's it's these it's these interesting things where like you want to you know, when you have kids, like it's it's the anticipation of it all is people are like I'm not ready to have kids yet. And my thing is always like you're if if you get a baby, you just become ready. 
Like, right. you, like life, you just, I don't know how you figure it out, but you just figure it out. Well, it depends it on It also who doesn't you... cost that much money. People are like, uh, it's so expensive. It's like, it's actually not. It gets there. It gets there with it, school yeah. and all that. But let's, I mean, you always have an option for public school. Diapers in the beginning, diapers and baby food. Child care. The child, child, care, care, child care for yes. parents at work is like, that, that's, that's expensive. That's, the, that's, ma expensive. that's the major expense. But, but feeding the baby and keeping, that's not, I mean, diapers and, and have become very affordable. Yeah. Diapers and baby food. And yeah. you got, oh, that food in your titty, girl. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm honestly looking forward to it. Dude, right? I swear when Jasmine was first at Delilah, right? She, because she had got like, you know, like breast implants or whatever. She couldn't feed delilah like right away she's talked about this like she the milk like it just wouldn't produce milk yeah, and yeah. literally even though like we live in a world where like we got they were even saying like similac and those types of things might even be better for sure. her brain development we can make it like literally i watched the doctor tell her that she couldn't give like feed her baby from her boob and i watched her look at me and if there was a gun there she would have went like this but she would have just <laughs> yeah, been like dude. well then it's over then yeah and i can't feed my kid and i'm a yeah. so it's like this ingratiated like nature thing is it's, she gonna bre she breastfed crew, she did right? yeah but i mean you did know it kind of it, dep it depends I, I fed him from my cock but yeah, no it, yeah <laughs> arrest him <laughs> <It's a drug. laughs> arrest him <laughs> <laughs> No, but we we know. should do that. By the way, anytime one of us say anything crazy, Vito, can you like edit in Ace Ventura going arrest? Oh, <laughs> it's from can the you, second one. Can you stop that? <laughs> Is that from the second hit the, one? Hit the light switch, quick! Yeah, arrest <laughs> oh, him. <laughs> Then he rolls around, but it's all daylight. <laughs> it's a, to me, <clears throat> and tell me if I'm right. I think that is bar none the greatest comedy sequel of all time. Yes, because I do. it's it's different than the original. It's not a callback fest. They just took the original character, every bit that was made it funny, and then put him in a completely different environment and said, "Hey, Jim Carrey, do uh, Houston Rockets, James Harden, and just cook. Cook. Let's go. We'll release you into these scenes, and you do your thing." And it's like one of the funniest sequels ever. Do you do you know that a lot of that stuff, like he had dialogue, but a lot of that stuff was just on the page. Like Jim Carrey says one word, and then like you make up the rest. Yeah. Like all that stuff, yeah. him rolling around, like. Director didn't tell him to do that. No. He just did that. The, even the spear thing, like the Uda, throw me a spear. Ah! Yeah, ah! Ah! It's, like it's amazing. Just, oh, it's just such. It's classic. Vito, baby mouth. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say just about. So, Mike, you said that's the best comedy sequel of all time. Do you consider that best sequel or just specifically comedy? Comedy. Okay. Yeah, sequel. Uh, you know, weirdly enough, so I have this thing where I I rewatch the same movie over and over and over again. And it takes a lot for me to see a new movie because I don't trust that it won't let it's me It's called down. being on the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> abandonment meets autism, <laughs> for sure. Uh, so I've never even seen Godfather 2. I've seen Godfather 1 like 10 times. I've never seen Godfather 2. Uh, I know it's amazing. I know I'm going to love it. But there's certain things like that where I just haven't allowed myself oh, that joy. Oh, I wasn't going to go there. I've never uh, seen Godfather I've 1. Really? No so shit. There you go. You, Whoa, you why don't we two. do a? We should do a Patreon. We should watch along. We should watch all the. I've Dude, never seen Godfather. Let's one. let's fucking let's do a Patreon watch along. Watch along where we have an Italian feast. Yes, and we yes. eat fucking. We eat those chicken, chicken parm. parms. Oh, by the way, speaking of that, I forgot to tell you the most important part of this podcast. We're coming to you live from Slam Magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slam a palm Slam. in your face. Uh, Go ahead. Real quick, best sequel, I think, in my opinion, similar for your reasoning, Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit. It's a yes. good one. It's one, it's more beloved than the original. Yeah. It's more remembered than the original. If you're going just quality from one to two, two is so much better than one. Yeah. Everybody talks about two. It gets referenced constantly. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill got started in two. Um, I think, isn't the mom, isn't the mom from that, the mom, the, mm. in Abbott Elementary? Oh, maybe. I, I don't watch. This episode sponsored by BetterHelp. Thanks to the good folks at BetterHelp. I certainly needed it after that joke. That After the joke that we cut out of the show, <laughs> I might need to go talk to my therapist because I let one fly. <laughs> and we got in trouble, but we're okay. BetterHelp is going to help me. I love BetterHelp because... I used to hate going to a therapist that I had to actually go to. I would yeah. talk myself out of it with my anxiety. I don't want to go. I don't want to get in the car and go. BetterHelp was all done online. It's 
convenient. It's yeah. flexible. You just do it. Well, the flexibility is like my favorite part because when you go to somebody in person, you then like have to be there. Right. So you are with that person no matter what. With with better help, you can actually be like, ah, you're not the right fit for me. I don't like this. And I'm going to go to the next doctor and try to find a doctor that perfectly suits what you're looking for. Right. So you don't have to just settle for whatever is out there proximity wise. Exactly. Better help is awesome. Mental health, it's a real thing. It's a real problem to talk about. And, uh, you know, even if you don't feel like you have mental health issues, you just go talk to someone once a week, get problems off your chest or just get thoughts off your chest. It's great. And you fill out this little questionnaire with BetterHelp and they match you with the best therapist. And right now you're going to get a nice discount. If you go to BetterHelp, that's H-E-L-P dot com slash chaos, you're going to get 10% off your first month. BetterHelp.com slash chaos. 10% off your first month. That's better. Help, H E L P dot com slash chaos. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with better help. Man, is I, Abbott Elementary supposedly a great show, right? Great. I, don't watch, hit, I heard yeah. it's like fantastic. I love it. I, like, I don't watch network television anymore. Like, that sounds like most douchebags, but. It's great. It's funny. It's it's written really well. The comedy works. Like I've just seen clips of Janelle, uh, Janelle James, who plays the. Does she play the principal? She plays the principal. She's so funny, man. She's a great actress. She's so good, and it's funny. Like first episode, it's like, it's. I think she was putting it on a little too much in the first episode, first two. Sure. And it's a lot like Steve Carell in The Office, where like yeah. first episode or two, you're like, oh, they haven't figured Trying it to out find yet. It. And James Gandolfini, the uh, yes. accent was too much in totally. the first in The Sopranos, and then they get into yeah. it. And she's uh, she's the best part of the show now. Yeah, right. Well, that's what happens when you <clears throat> when you also have to like film a pilot. Is one, it's disconnected from the rest of the season, so you're basically creating this character out of thin air, and you're also trying to get it greenlit. So you are throwing 100 mile per hour smoke, <laughs> yeah. like you're yeah. just overdoing the shit out of it. But then once it gets greenlit into a series, and you can kind of get the rhythm of the character yeah. and really like almost like a vert ramp drop into it, like that's when everybody just gets better at their character. And Quinta Brunson, that that was like the first thing she ever did, right? She created that show. Oh, really? I, am I wrong on that, Vito? She created that. That show she created it she writes it I but i'm she saying she wasn't in, in like entertainment really before that or she, she was. was on buzzfeed she was she was like one of the like buzzfeed sketch players got it wow. i Good love her, her i think man. she's beautiful quinta brunson yeah. i like her i, I was know. i was uh, i was watching somebody was watching it on the plane uh going out to orlando last week and i was like i kind of love her nice quinta is she, is she related to um the next point guard i hope so let's find out if you had an opportunity to sleep with Quinta Brunson or Jalen Brunson, who would you pick Jaylen first Brunson. and why? Yes. Not a, it's like he's brought me more joy as a as an athlete in the New York area. It's the most since Eli Manning. They're third in the East right now, the yeah. Knicks, by the way. Or they might be tied, right? Tied for third with the Magic. Who do you want them to play? Like what? What's your? I just want them to hold off on Boston as long as possible. So if they can get the second seed, especially I, if they get an Eastern Conference Finals appearance, this is the greatest victory in Knicks like in in Knicks season history in a long time because they're without Julius Randle, who will be a driving force in the playoffs. <clears throat> I hope you know. I wanted them to get traded because I just think that they could possibly fill that with some other pieces, but. He's still a major part, and I think without him to make a run that deep, it would be great and possible if they just don't. Do you want to go to the game Friday? Yes, they're playing the Nets. All right, we'll go. We'll go Knicks Nets. I Dude, can oh, so I forgot. I forgot to say this. Um, after the Knicks game <laughs> this past week, um, the next day, uh, I'm I'm telling crew about the game, and he's on the toilet and going to the bathroom, and I keep like we're we're trying to go somewhere and get the day going. I'm like, are you ready? And he's like, I'm not done. It's like ten minutes, and I'm like, are you done? He's like, I'm not done. And then finally, I'm like, dude, are you done? He's like, I'm done. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> And I just take them off. I go to wipe them, and I stick my full thumb in a piece of shit that's just ejected from his asshole. Arrest like, him! Arrest him! <laughs> like, just a diving board of shit, like an Italian diver slipped off in front of the president. My thumb just went knuck deep right in it, and I was like, "You absolute asshole!" And he started dying laughing. I love it. Dude. <laughs> How about this? Arrest him. Arrest. Vito, at your own knowledge, at your own discretion, when you think like we've said something wild, can you always edit? Arrest him. Yeah. All right. Um, I can also, for next week, we can just add it as a drop that we can play when you guys say yeah. it in real time. Arrest him. I love that. Wait, can you pull up our uh, notes? Because I, I there's, there's, oh, I want to talk about, um, let's talk about the eclipse. <laughs> quick um i gotta be honest with you i respect it i respected yeah. the eclipse i really did after five minutes though i was like i get it 
Yeah. I don't understand. Well, we're here. So it wasn't full. But what does full that. mean? Like, did it go fully dark? Have you seen the videos? No. So the videos, the videos are like, are cool. The ones in Texas or whatever that show it like blocking full coverage of the sun. Totality. It definitely looked way cooler than in New York because we went to the Bronx Zoo and we're it was a beautiful day. First beautiful day in a while. Post special, all that stuff. Stress free. The animals definitely sensed something was coming. Was the Bronx Zoo packed? No. Surprisingly enough, it was Why wasn't. did you pick the Bronx Zoo to watch the eclipse? We were going there anyway and and then we realized it was the eclipse on the drive. And got then it. so we went to the high school where my wife's mother works, got eclipse glasses, went to the Bronx Zoo, and we're like, hey, if we're ever, if the tigers are going to escape, we might as well it's be at be the now. forefront. So wait, so is this in total this dark? The, this is the day. This is daytime. Yeah. It's like 3 p.m. This is 3 p.m. So this is, okay, so that's pretty sick. Right. So they're standing in full darkness right here. Yeah. So you yeah, have for to, us, it looked like a daytime moon. Like it wasn't right. that cool. So I, I would say, though, like, I mean, this happened. This has happened in parts of the world before. Like I would get, I would understand if like this happened in ancient times and like the king would be like, I have to behead everyone now. Yeah, yeah. Like it's a, I get it because it's so kind of insane. Mystical. That you'd be like, I have to now kill everything. Right. Well, I think about that all the time. Like how did like, even the first people understand what wind was. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Like, how didn't you just walk around and just be like, what the fuck? Like, there's yeah. like an invisible monster hitting my face. Yeah. There, everything needed some kind of spiritual attachment or reasoning just for them to be able to get through their day. Right. Because they had no explanation for any of this shit. Yeah, I, I really, I, you know, I guess in, you know, these places like, this is totality in Vermont. It was total and fully in Vermont. Yeah, I'll pull up the whole, there's like a line of, Totality, right. where it was like Syracuse, uh, Vermont, some other places. I mean, that literally looks like the Twilight Saga logo. Yeah. Imagine being born like at the moment of the eclipse. There had to have been somebody <laughs> who was just fully born. So this is the, this is the totality pathway. Right. Yeah, I mean, listen, it was fun, you know, like, because it was a beautiful day. Like, all the kids were out, you know, got out of school a few minutes early. So, like, we watch it. But, like, even my daughter, after a while, she was like, I, I don't get what it's supposed to, what I'm looking at. I'm like, well, the sun, the moon's going in front of the sun. She was like, oh. I, <laughs> cool. <laughs> I also thought it was going to cover, I thought it was going to pass the sun completely. Me too. And then when it only made, like, a crescent moon. Yeah. I was a little disappointed. But it was fun. Me and John watched it together. So it was. You like, watched it in City Aww. Field, right? We That's did. We went, on, we went like up on the top deck and just watched it happen. <laughs> it definitely got darker. Yeah. Did, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what? It felt just as dark. And we talked about this. It felt just as dark as the day that the sky was orange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it pretty much felt like that. And that was creepier, was to be honest. That yeah. was, and why and, was it and also it? Mars because of the fires, remember? Right. That's the, right. The Canadian and fires. Dude, and right. like breathing that shit in, that like that felt like everybody. Remember that episode of The Simpsons where Selma is dating Troy Troy McClure and then she switches to cigars instead of cigarettes and she's like, hey, it's like smoking 10 cigarettes at <laughs> once. It's like that's what it felt like to breathe in the natural air in New York that day. Yeah. Like you were truly inhaling just a full pack of cigarettes. I don't even re I remember I've been having trouble with remembering things like big monumental things like in my life. Like I, I forget like like I was like, oh, um, you know, I've never been to, uh, you know, a, a NBA playoff game. And then it's like I've been to eight of them, <laughs> you know, like but I don't remember it. Do you ever feel like that? Like you don't remember things that you, like you don't remember going to a friend's wedding yeah. But you were there at the wedding, and they have pictures to prove. But you're like, I didn't go to your wedding. I feel I'll feel like that for like going to a concert or even like seeing a game or something. I'll like look back months later and be like, I don't remember specific moments from that. Like yeah, it, it feels like a blur. Right. Well, sometimes, and I think I think this is the case with me. Is like you know how you can set your phone to like delete storage after a month or whatever yeah. because you're just filling it with too much shit. That's kind of what I feel about my brain right. is that we meet so many new people. We're talking to new people. We're thinking about new ideas. We're doing podcasting. We're saying so much shit all the time that, like you said, it's hard to keep track of both memories and fallacies and, you know, what's real and what's not. Or like this happened to me the other day. I met uh, I saw uh, in my neighborhood a friend that I went to high school with that I used to have lunch with every day in high school. And I saw him, and I forgot what his name was, and I forgot he even existed. Mm -hmm. Do you? Do you? Is that, is that like yeah. abnormal? 
Or no. that's pretty because because then I thought about it, I was like, well, I haven't seen him in 21 years. Right. That's a very, very, very long time. The only reason people expect you to be, to remember that shit is because of social media. Like I remember specifically <laughs> when I was like eight and I was on the subway with my father and he ran into somebody from high school and he was like, fucking Gary, I haven't seen you in 20, whatever it was. And like, you know, they, he told me after he's like, I haven't, I didn't remember that guy. Like it all of a sudden clicked in who he was, but it's just because he had no contact, no social media, no reminder of who that guy was. Right. But because Facebook exists, you're supposed to still have this guy's like stats running yeah. through the back of your brain. But it's like, no, I've, I've uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, tonight I'm bringing it up because tonight I, I think I will remember tonight because tonight, I think I think when things aren't about me, when they're for someone else, oh yes. Well, what helps me remember things, to be honest with you, is Magic Mind. Me too. That's why I think I'll be able to remember um, most things. Is why I'm able. I like Magic Mind personally. Because I love I, Magic I Mind. I no longer drink alcohol, <clears throat> and right. I'm always looking for for kind of like a replacement, something to sip on at parties that's not going to make me, that's going to make me feel at peace, calm, yes. socially lubricated. And that's exactly what Magic Mind does for it's me. It's a mental performance shot. Um, and it's helped me mentally so far. And I know it's going to help me mentally tonight because I have a big thing. I'm going to take my daughter to the Benson Boone concert. It is her oh, favorite singer. Okay. She sing. It's the only person she's ever really cared about musically it's her 1975 that's great and so she doesn't know we're taking her she we're, we're saying that we're taking her because she got a good grade on her math test we're yeah. saying that we're just taking her out to dinner but we're really going to take her to this benson boone concert and we got meet and greets oh man so that's we awesome. get we got to get there at six he doesn't come on till 10 so that it's gonna <laughs> oh be like so we've already probably said she's not going to school tomorrow and that's okay yeah but magic mind's going to help me through it because they give me the magic promise which is they refund 100 percent with no questions asked if you don't like it for 100 days you're good They'll give you your money back, clean energy with natural ingredients without excessive amounts of caffeine, no afternoon crashes, no jitters. That's what I need. I need, I don't want to crash because I'm going to have to drive them home. <laughs> and you can achieve greatness one shot at a time. They ship internationally in over 50 countries. The Magic Mind promise, we promise to only use the world's best suppliers to require rigorous testing of every ingredient sent to us for every production run, to readily provide certificates of analysis for our ingredients to anyone who requests them, to inspect every bottle of Magic Mind by hand, and to test every batch of Magic Mind reproduced in a third-party lab. So that's huge. I mean, most companies do not do that, but Magic Mind, Magic Mind does. And of course... You're going to get a great offer for listening to this podcast. They have a limited offer you can now you, you can use now that gets you up to 48% off your first subscription or 20% off a one-time purchase with code CHAOS, C-H-A-O-S, at checkout. You can go to magicmind.com slash Chrissy Chaos, put in that checkout code CHAOS, get 48% off your first subscription or 20% off one-time purchases with that code. I love you, Magic Mind. I love you, Benson Boone. Highly recommend. I do highly recommend him. It's nice. It, it's like a it's a chill vibe. Yeah. He he looks like, he looks like a creepier uh, like Jack Harlow. He does, and he looks actually <laughs> he like looks like French Jack Harlow. <laughs> he does. France. <laughs> he looks like uh, Tommy Russo, our my he tour does, manager. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so she sings him like every day. Like she just loves him. Do you know you? Well, we can't play his music, right? Uh, no. no. I mean, we can play it, and then the Patreon people, we could do it with them. Yeah, the Patreon... Yeah, here. I think you've heard his stuff. Here, this this will be at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. <laughs> Watching Delilah, like, be so happy, like, that'll be my birthday gift. I'm like, yeah, that and a, a fucking trip to Dubai. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, how about that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, both are equally fulfilling. Yeah, but that thing is... Yes. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, and, you know... Fellas, this I messed this up the last time, and even my dad was like, "Well, you gotta just do it." Is yes, I'm taking her to Dubai for her birthday, right? It's big. I have a show and whatever. But you, in addition, you still have to do. You still do have to get your girl a gift in addition to the trip. Like yeah. you can't just be like this. This is it, bitch. You can't. You can't go like this. Yeah, you, you have to get her something else. So what? What do you think you I gonna, should get her? You should get her a book and then push her out into public and see what happens. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. She's reading. Yeah. And then yeah. Just run away. Sinner. What? What do you think? What's a good gift? Like, what about like uh, a home? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Damn. Damn. A home would be a good one. Um. 
What can I get her? Um, can, is she a jewelry person? Yeah, but she doesn't. Well, she's got jewelry. She's got like all that stuff. What's like something better? Can you What's up, more thoughtful? I can mean, you a, upgrade her equipment, like her spin stuff? No, I mean we have a we have we put the our her equipment in our garage. So like she she has that. But is, can you can you upgrade it in any way, or is it all like? Well, she's got like a Peloton. Like she doesn't. You should get her a full streaming service that can be like 360 Ooh. set around the bike, so she can just start her own Peloton. That's good, Mike. One. That's a good idea. Not but bad. how? But I can't. But how do I give that to her in Dubai? <laughs> <laughs> should I just pack a spin bike? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll give her like. Um, what about like a. Uh, why don't you buy one of those weird things that like Michael Jackson was randomly buying in the Middle East? Remember that that old documentary where he was walking around with Martin, whatever that Br the British documentarian, and he was literally walking around like Sultan palaces, being like, "I'll take three of those. I'll take four of those." <laughs> yeah. and it was like golden, fucking weird potted plants. Like, like not a human on earth could use that. And yeah. he's like, "I'll take that for six hundred thousand. <laughs> I am getting her a camel ride through the desert. Oh, that's I mean, cool. What, yeah. That's cool, right? A photo? Are you gonna have a photographer there? Yeah. Oh wait, when is this coming out? Monday. Oh shit! <laughs> I guess the camel ride hadn't hasn't happened yet. Then. Why That's don't you propose on Wednesday? <laughs> in in the sands. I'll arrest him. <laughs> I'll arrest him. <laughs> I, I don't think she's gonna listen to this. Yeah, she she has told me. Not only does she not listen, she doesn't follow me on social. She has no. She is fully like, she's like, I don't know what's going on in your life unless you tell me. Damn. And that's the way I want it. Damn, Jasmine too. Not since Mike joined. Have I not? Yes. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Jasmine's all the mean comments. Imagine. I, that would be that'd sick. Be great. I would love for her to just fucking let it rip. She <laughs> yeah. would have some, she would, she would, women just know how to say the, the things that you are just most embarrassed about. They'll just fucking hit you. Well, do you it. know why? Because you tell them what they are. Yep. And then, like, absolute sociopaths, they weaponize it against you. Yep. That's what it is. <laughs> um, I, uh, all right. So we gotta th I got to think of something good to get her. I mean, I do think that if you allow yourself to be, uh, to, like, look at what you've already done, I think that's good. Well, can you go to patreon.com slash Christy Comedy and tell me suggestion gifts, things I could buy in Dubai the day of her birthday? That's what can idea. I get in Dubai? What about uh, leave it on the YouTube comments? Yes, and leave it on the YouTube comments as well. YouTube.com slash Christy Comedy. Leave it on the YouTube comments and tell me what gift I'm supposed to get her in Dubai. And well, we won't. You Obviously, this will be out. We won't be able to record an episode before you do it. So you'll you'll give us feedback if you bought anything out. Yes, like you're, I will. You're legitimately looking for feedback. Yes. Well, while you're in Dubai, why don't you do what the Dubaianese do and buy her like something like glitzy like yeah. some crazy pair of glasses a bedazzled jewelry. hijab yes a bedazzled, <laughs> a bedazzled hijab. hijab yes yeah. maybe I'll, maybe that's what i'll do maybe i'll get maybe I'll, I'll 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 put diamonds all over a spin bike i'll get her a bedazzled spin bike <laughs> okay yeah or maybe like one of those like bedazzled microphones like I'll just, that, like matt rife yeah <laughs> does he have a bedazzled one no but he does have the tony robbins slash madonna headpiece and he comes out like he's giving a motivational speech. i would like to See what it's like to perform with that thing on. If, if you did, I would behead you on the spot. Yep. I think it's the most insane choice for a comedy show. Oh, there's a person at my door. Let's see who it is. Who's at my fucking door? Oh, who's this guy? Oh, nobody. Oh, it's just packages. What the hell was that? I don't know. Was that a sneeze? It sounded like that Michael sounded, Jackson. That sounded like Mario <laughs> leveling up. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm 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 getting rid of my I'm trading in my Lincoln Navigator. I got somebody oh, to you take did it, it on lease swap. You talked about this on the last episode. Yes, yeah, so I got somebody to take it, but the guy and I get it, I get it, but the guy is being so fucking annoying because he's like, I don't, you know, all the paperwork's done or whatever, and I get it. He lives in Florida. He's like, you know, you just have to take the car to the dealer, and like they just need to check it before like I fully accept, which I get, I totally get. I just don't have time to do it right now. And he asks me every day. He's like, can this be done ASAP? Can you just do this, please? And I get it. It's like, I should be like, absolutely, because I want this car off my hands. And But I'm one second away from regretfully texting him, deals off, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, he's yeah. absolutely in the right. Can somebody do it for you? Can you just ask somebody to do it? 
Can John do it? Can John just drive well, the Navigator? Well, I called you? Lincoln because I, I have it's called the Black Label, the Lincoln Navigator Black Label. They're supposed to be, they'll come to you. They're supposed to be from any dealership. They'll come to you and treat your car. That's but once like, you break your lease, they're like, fuck this. But I haven't done. broken it yet. So right. I'm like, can you just come check the car, give me some certification? And then like, so because I, I don't, I can't like go there. I mean, I can, but I just don't want to. <laughs> the only reason I didn't volunteer is I just learned how to drive a year ago. And I think your car is just too much for me. Let me call them. Okay. Actually, wait, no, because I'm going to have to give them my address. Um. <laughs> Oh, this also isn't the place to call them. Yeah, Jack. <laughs> like that, that. Like I'm all for phone calls during the show, but that's like the least interesting thing. You can, <laughs> like, hey, you I just need to plan out the logistics yes. of a car drop Speaking off. Speaking of calls, should we do a voicemail? Do we have any good ones? Oh, we have See good who's ones. good at segways. I'm a professional. John, it's too early in the year for shorts. <laughs> Dude, I love it. Hey, Chris. Um, so I'm 24, living in the city. And I guess I just want, well, I don't know if I want your advice, to be honest. Maybe Mike's advice. Um, as a man, when do you stop being so retarded and so immature? And it just makes dating very hard these days because these boys, oh, my God. And I'll go out with boys in New York City, and they'll be from, like, Orlando, Florida. Dang shit. It's just, I don't know what to do. I like your advice because Hinge and those apps suck. And meeting people in real life even sucks because the boys don't know how to speak. It's as if they're literally mute. So they just stand there bug-eyed. Um, yeah. So I would like your opinions on that. Um, and, yeah, bye. So wait, so did she say toxic? First of all, she said she wanted a man's advice and then said she didn't want your advice. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then I like, it, it makes me feel weird when people say I'm dating boys. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, okay. I will say though that like, she's, I mean, she sounds like a real New Yorker. Like, you know, how there's I like, like her. you know, how there's preservations created for endangered animals. Mm -hmm. There should be like a preservation for that type of New Yorker as well. Like, cause that's, that's running out. Like your right. type of New York, that yeah. like real, like yeah. New York cocksucker, like that yeah. kind of like that vibe. And she just has that. Right. And I just feel like she needs to be protected. But the moment I grew up was the moment my wife told me I was pregnant. So, or yeah. told me she was pregnant. So I don't know, I guess date somebody and fake a pregnancy and see if that she, changes things. You know whose type she seems like? She seems like she is Hispanic. Yes. And even though she speaks English, John. Interesting. John's about the right age. Yeah. John's what, 26? How old are you, John? 25. 25. Oh, this girl's 24. She does speak good English, which is a, a negative for John. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but I, I think, yeah, as far as, I think she, you're also young. You're 24. So I think the boys you're dating your word, the boys you're dating, I think are probably also young. I would go for an older guy. Yeah. Or just dumb. Like a guy in his mid-50s. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, like a fucking Russell Simmons yeah. daughter. Yeah. Did you see that? What if we call her and John tries to riz her up on the phone right now? Oh, give a little riz quiz? Yeah. I don't know. She, she might need some context. Uh, it's kind of off the cuff. No, I mean, you but... can tell her you're John. For, you could say I'm Father John. Jihad John from Chrissy Chaos. I heard you were call. I heard you call. <clears throat> call her up. Yeah, let's try. Do you Why want, not? Do you yeah. want to do an intro? Though? Yeah, I'll say. What's her name? Her name is no name. She didn't give us her name. Hi. Do you know who this is? KiwiCo. Let me tell you something. I use KiwiCo. Mike, you use KiwiCo. I do. Right? Yeah. Your son. It literally is. They ship activities in crates to your doorstep that your kids love. I mean, what else do you want? And it's curated. To your kids' interests. So whatever they're into, science, outdoors, whatever, any skill set that you want them to develop, you go to KiwiCo, you plug it in, you curate directly for your kids, and they send you the activities. Listen, each creator design is designed by real experts and tested by kids to ensure that every experience is age-appropriate, engaging, and seriously fun. The crates come with everything needed for kids to build, including materials, instructions. We built a, a pinball machine we built a oh, lava awesome. lamp we built this butterfly nest like things that like it just it, what i love about it is like there's times where like you're sitting at home from school or summer break whatever and like the kids will just go on the tablet or watch tv and watch youtube yeah. all day this gets them off 
their devices for hours at a time and then they're learning you're learning you're engaging it's amazing well that's why it's like in, we're in an age of instant gratification right everything is just satiated right away with KiwiCo you actually put in the work for the process and at the end of it you see how accomplished your kids feel yeah and you're like oh there's something to this whole hard work thing exactly yeah yeah and then you know and you're like I, I I'm I'm a better father than I give myself credit for I have a beer <laughs> <laughs> Redefine learning with play. Explore projects that build confidence and problem-solving skills with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month on any crate line at KiwiCo.com with promo code CHAOS. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O.com. Promo code CHAOS. Oh, 516. It's from Long Island. Your call has been forwarded to voicemail. The person you're trying to reach is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up. Hey, um, my name's Chris. Um, I'm 27 years old and I'm so immature. <laughs> I'm not. I am just the most immature guy you'll ever meet in your life. I haven't. Um, who's, oh, somebody just texted you. Um, I haven't. Uh, what? Wait, what did she say? <laughs> what did she say? Oh, all the boys just stand there bug-eyed. Yeah, well, I'm bug-eyed Chrissy. No, hello. Um, I don't know what. I just wanted to call and say thank you for your voicemail. And um, I think that you need to date an older man. We were assuming, we were uh, suggesting a guy in his mid-50s we think would work for you. And if not, if you want, we do have uh, a man... Uh, oh boy, your words, who is your age, 25 years old. He works for the podcast, John the Father, John the Father Grady, Father John Grady, Jihadi John, who uh, would like to potentially go on a date with you, but he is a little concerned that you speak English too well. <laughs> so if there's a way that you could come with an accent or speak another language, we think we might have the guy for you. Thanks for being a part of the Chrissy Cass podcast. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that's good advice, though. Yeah. But find a single dad. Yes. Like a dad that has a kid because the mother lost her mind. Yep. That's your best bet. That's the best bet. Um, all right. We got any other voicemails? Yeah. Or is that that? Too? All right. Let, uh, well. You want to wait? Do you want to do mean comments? And then let's do mean yeah. comments. And then, oh, um, before we get to mean comments, tell us about the Bronx Zoo fun facts. Oh, dude. So we went this to the Bronx. This is wild. This is wild. Because so the Bronx Zoo, we went. And I've known this for a, for a well, long time. Ask them. But who do you, do you think owns the Bronx Zoo? Yeah. Who do you think? The state. Right. No, that's a that's yeah. a that's a reasonable yeah. guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like if, the city, if I maybe. To, if I had to give a different guess, like the World Wildlife Foundation. Sure. Right. Would you ever in your entire life guess that Tracy Morgan <laughs> owns the Bronx Zoo? Tracy, Tracy Morgan Tracy owns Morgan? the Bronx Zoo, dude. Google it. <laughs> is it post Walmart? I don't know. Yes. I yes. Think it no, is. it is. Yeah. It is. Oh, it is. Okay. It is. It is. That's what he said. He was. He said he used the Walmart. Lawsuit money to buy the Bronx Zoo. I mean, the, what a purchase! I yeah. think that's <laughs> yeah, actually yeah. the best, the yeah. best purchase money could buy. Yeah, because I mean, does any do anybody else? Does any other comedian own like three tigers and four lions? Byron Allen owns the Weather Channel. What? Yes, I mean that's crazy. From comics too. Yeah. Unleashed, he and he also them. owns the Masters to like every Richard Pryor special. Yep, that's yep. how he's made so much money. Good for him. Who told you this? Google Tracy Morgan owns yeah. the Bronx Zoo. Owns the Bronx Zoo. It's a yeah, fact. Tracy yeah. Morgan owns the Bronx Zoo. Yeah. Google it. It's wild. Boom. Yep. Tour of the Bronx Zoo. It's been revealed that comedian used the settlement money he received to buy the Bronx Zoo. Yeah. There you I go. Mean, Boom. Is, Tough acting, ten acting. Unbelievable. Isn't that cool? Because I was looking. I was like, who the hell owns this place? Like, what is it? It just seems like a city park. But I'm like, yeah, yeah. is that yeah. where the new below 60th Street toll money is going? I doubt it. <laughs> so I looked it up, and it's fucking T Morgs from, from 30 Rock. No, it's unreal. Uh, and on top of that, so the other fun fact that I had, and this is less fun but more fact, um, is that there was a human exhibit. At the Bronx Zoo, as reason uh, as recently as 1906, a pygmy really? man named Ota Benge was in a cage next to other animals. I think also in a cage with other animals, and they gave him a bow and arrow so he could live hunt in front of onlookers, and instead turned the arrow towards the spectators and would try to shoot them. And then eventually they were like, wait, guys, this is like decades after slavery. We probably just shouldn't have a guy in a cage, like, you know, just yeah. for people to look at. So they put him in a suit, 
kicked him the fuck out of the zoo, gave him no kind of reintroduction into society, and then he flat out Brooks was heared himself in some, you know, hotel in the Bronx. There you go. Love it. Tough. Can I ask you guys a question? <laughs> I, I, there, I, just, I don't, I don't want to ruin your fun. It's not fun. But I, he doesn't fucking own the zoo. He, yes, he does. Like, Vito, he owns the he fucking zoo. He doesn't own the fucking zoo. Yes, okay. he does. What, does, it, does he not, John? That's, that's what Google said. Complex. So where are you saying? I, I don't know if I'm ruining a bit. Like, if I'm ruining a bit, tell You're me. You're not ruining out. a bit. I promise you he owns the zoo. <laughs> it was a fucking Jimmy Kimmel bit. No. Uh, no, yeah, I think no, he really thinking. bought it. <laughs> well, no, that's it. the thing that because we just saw the YouTube with the perfect cover photo with him and Jimmy Kimmel saying <laughs> I bought a zoo, that does kind of throw a, <laughs> that throws a little bit of a wrench into my rationale, but I do but real real like news results came up as like the official and they owner. It all led to the Jimmy Kimmel video. Oh. Can yeah, I, I ask you click. guys a question? Can you Google Emirates flight Bro, stop using the podcast and just fucking do your, like, daily chores. No, because I want you to ask. I, I don't know if my flight leaves at 11.20 in the morning or 11.20 at night. So you want everybody to know your flight information that listens to the podcast. But it's just the flight. You gave the full flight number. <laughs> So you want people to be able to track your flight like fucking Taylor Swift. You want to be I <laughs> don't. I don't. Like... It's very confusing. I'll look it up for you, but I'm I don't not know. Gonna put this out. I don't Is it know. a Boeing? What's it, the flight again? No, it's uh, okay. <laughs> Dude, we'll put the, this on the Patreon. The, the actual fear in your eyes when I ask that question. Uh, it departs at eleven twenty a.m. Eleven twenty a.m. Yes. Uh -huh. Not p.m. From JFK. Yep. Got it. I, I was fully prepared to go at 11.20 at night. <laughs> Dude, you are legitimately my favorite human on planet Earth. I'm an <laughs> idiot. And then we get in at 7.50 in the morning, not at night. <laughs> Wait, sorry. What day is your flight? Because that's today. That's the, the flight number today. No, no. But no, but it's the same flight every day. <laughs> Hold on. Let's... Dude, if his flight is fucking taking <laughs> off right now. In context, it's 11.07 right now. I got to go, 11... dude. <laughs> <laughs> April 14th is the flight. Okay. Uh, but so I'm leaving at 11:20 in the morning. Yeah. Now, do you no. see how you do you see how you confuse those two things, and that's like an easy mistake? Yes. Do you see how one could maybe understand that Jimmy that Tracy Morgan didn't actually buy a zoo? Right. I don't believe it, dude. Check it out. I, Let's check for real. How about this? How about we go to Wikipedia? Where's the Library of Congress? Do they have this to, information? Go to Wikipedia. I'll look up Tracy Morgan and see if his name pops up anywhere on the Bronx of Wikipedia. Okay. All right. I don't know why I'm really going to bat for T. Morg so hard, but I really just want him to own this zoo. All right, here I am on Wikipedia. Okay. All right, I press Control F. I'm typing in his name. Sure. T R A C Y. E Y. Put in e Bronx Zoo Morgan. Morgan, nothing. And does Tracy Siri maybe it's not updated? Siri, does Tracy Morgan own the Bronx Zoo? Hello, Siri. Does Tracy Morgan own the Bronx Zoo? How do you do Siri? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't even doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it not working? <laughs> hey Siri, does Tracy Morgan own the Bronx Zoo? Yep. Yeah. What is it, like what how do you use Siri? I don't know. Doesn't Who this, is that? That's Doesn't this look like a Jimmy Kimmel okay, sketch? Right that's yes. also the Central Park Zoo. That that is the that's the seals at the Central Park yeah. Zoo. Yeah. Okay, so it was a lie. She's here. The sexologist is here. All right. Oh, nope, that's the Bronx Zoo. Sexologist is here. She's going to be on the next episode. I didn't want to ruin the fun. It I, really, it really. I didn't want to ruin the fun, but here's the thing. If I, I don't, appreciate the fact. If I don't say it, you know what happens? I spread it. You know what happens? No. Everybody comments and says, right. your producer's a fucking idiot <laughs> and didn't tell you. Yeah. So I would love to live in a world where we could all have fun and, and live in a fantasy sure. world where we pretend and have fun. But these people ruined it, and I think that's a perfect time to go into mean comments. Good point. Yes. Mean oh, but comments. what's the other fact about the Bronx Zoo? It was the Ota Bengay thing. That is okay. a real fact. No, that was great. That, that is real and Ota also is uh, great. really sad. Yeah. Really sad stuff. And I've said it on multiple podcasts, so if you're going to yell at me that I'm recycling stories, I'm sorry, but it's just a fucking fact that nobody knows about, and it's insane. Yep. Insane in the membrane. Arrest him. Arrest him. 
Oh, rats dumb. Come on, let's do mean comments. Ooh, you're mean. Ooh, welcome to mean comments. Yeah, mean girls. From CCCCTT3737, Chrissy Clubfoot, your humility is strong. Thank you. I appreciate it. That I do nice. have a clubfoot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, From no. at FNPM, Chris, have you got Tourette, early Parkinson, ADHD, or just on drugs or what? It seems like you have some constant ticks in the whole body going on in every video I see you. Please take care. It's just coffee and pre-workout. And anxiety. Yeah. Let us rock. Yeah, it's called being a white man in today's America. I wonder if a camera was on you at all times, if we'd notice anything weird. Pussy. <laughs> at Dimebagger, Chris, why your legs so bald? Is this on purpose? They were burned in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> do you have bald legs? I, have I do. One, I have one patch that's bald from like constantly rubbing. Yeah. On no, my, but I can see, see some hair. Bro, when I, I was big, I would get it like one side of my leg would have no hair and up yeah. by my thighs would get no hair because it would be rubbed off. I oh. have, um, yeah, I just have hairless. Uh, oh, hi. <laughs> hi, how hi. you doing? Well, just finishing up. One, yeah, well, the, our, our friend Chantel, the sexologist, is here. Is it Chantel? Chantel. Chantel. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'll uh, read, uh, this is from... <laughs> Dorab2402. I don't hate Mike in this one for some reason. There you go. Sunshine. That's nice. It's getting better. Winning Here's Dorab. From Alicia in Bloom. Why do you guys keep letting him show his feet, please? <laughs> well, because uh, Vito has a fetish. Uh, and that at El Dudorino 9097. I feel dumber after listening to Chris. Thank you. Appreciate it. At Jugabelly 9255. At 43 <laughs> minutes and 12 seconds. LOL. Chris has Puerto Rican Tourette's. I don't know I what that I is. What the, they Puerto Rican Tourette sounds like merch. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is a good one. At Excellent, E G G C E L L E N T dash L M 5 S V. As the years have passed, and the more I've heard about your life and the people you support, hang out with, and praise, even though you know that said people are terrible humans, has now made me believe that you two are terrible. I've lost all respect for you. I used to enjoy your content, but now I have absolutely no interest. It seems that for the most part, comedians are just horrific humans with psychopathic <laughs> tendencies and have developed being funny so that they can get attention. Correct. What? I mean, in what world were you under any other impression? <laughs> like, yeah. why does that? And that's what comedy has always been, yes. is psychopaths. <laughs> Here we go. At Yes You, Chris is a hack and he's just annoying. Now he wants to be this enlightened person and just comes off as sounding dumb and needy. And then I wrote, do I look jacked though? <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> um, so that's it. That's it. That's Those are the comments. That's the meme comments. That's, that's the meme comments. I'm in Dubai right now. Come to the show tomorrow. Leave comments with what Chris should get Jasmine for her birthday. Yes, what am I supposed to get Jasmine for her birthday in Dubai? I'm at the Dubai Opera House tomorrow. So come, ChristyComedy.com. And then in June, uh, June 2nd, we've added Amsterdam, London, Manchester, all these shows. They're all almost sold out. So go to ChristyComedy.com. And you know when I say they're almost sold out, that's a lie. <laughs> uh, MikeCannonComedy.com for my tickets. Emmaus, Pennsylvania at the end of April with, Fien uh, with Michael Feeney and uh, Brendan Sagalow. That'll be very fun. Going to be in Poughkeepsie. Going to be in uh, Nashville coming up. I'm going to be in a bunch of places all at MikeCannonComedy.com. New material, so it's going to be bad. And just give people an update on which European shows aren't happening because people keep asking. So I still don't exactly know. I don't think Dublin is going to happen. I don't know, though, because we are trying to fit the shows that I had to cancel because I forgot about my stepson's graduation. We are trying to fit those shows into the week before. So I still don't have a full update on what's canceled and what's not. Just hold on to your tickets for now. One way or another, they'll either be refunded. You can have your full money back or you can just, I will make the shows up. So that's a good, that's a good note. If you have tickets to the show, maybe the week before. Hold on. Yeah, it might be the week before. And then all tickets will be good. Or, I, yeah, I, you know, but it is chaos. I don't know. And I'm sorry that this is happening. But I, again, for once again, made a mistake and it's all my fault. Thank <laughs> you.